My name is Johan, born and raised in the northern part of Sweden. Now I'm a PhD student at Functional Product Development at Lule University of Technology. This is a short recap of my experience from one month in Silicon Valley, far away from the comfort zone in Sweden. The journey started back in the spring when one of my colleagues had a meeting with Vinova and heard about the program called IIP. Vinova, the Swedish governmental agency for innovation system, wanted to send 15 students and professionals over to California in July and August to learn more about entrepreneurship. In Sweden we usually have summer vacation in contrast to what they are used to, so it was a perfect timing. I applied to the program and after a while I got provisional accepted. Although at this time I didn't knew where I was going to be placed. IIP or the International Innovation Practic was made as an internship program and all participants was going to be placed in different startup companies. So one week before I was going to take off for California, or actually at this time I didn't knew if I was going to take part of the program since I needed a host company first. Finally, I had a match with a biotech company in Menlo Business Park. In my research, I'm used to work with large global companies such as the Volvo Group with about 90,000 employees working with transportation solutions. So, what should I do in a small biotech company? How can I help them and what will I gain from it? I decided to take the opportunity to do something way out of my comfort zone. Telom Health was going to be my place for the program. So in the same way, I guess you are wondering right now, what are they doing? I was one week before the program started. The short explanation I was told by one of my colleagues at the company was, if you think about the chromosomes in your body as the shoestring, then the telomere is the plastic part in the end of them. By measuring the length of the telomere, you can predict, for example, if a person has an increased risk to get cancer. In the end of this program, we were told to share our experiences from this journey. And that's what I want to do with you as well. I'm going to tell you three things to take into consideration when talking about entrepreneurship. Risk networking and time. I'm really fascinated about the fearless way of dealing with risk. I wanted to tell you the story about my contact person in the company. After about 10 years in London, working as a producer and coordinator, she took her husband and kids and moved back to the Bay Area and started at Tillum Health. I asked myself and tried to understand why you take the risk moving from what we in Sweden call a Svensson Svensson life to a startup on the other side of the world. So ask yourself, would I have taken this step? If the answer is yes, welcome to a world of opportunities. The motivation to do something good for people is greater than the fact that you had a peaceful life. The possibility to make money and save the world is part of the environment. The attitude in Silicon Valley supports people that have a dream to become entrepreneurs. If you didn't make it, try once again. I'm used to an environment where you don't talk more than necessary compared to what I have experienced with everyone I have met at events during this program. They immediately started to tell their pitch, a life story, or try to connect me with others. I realized that they see networking as a natural part of life. You shouldn't go to an event with the approach that you are just there to gain something for your own purpose. I was told that it is better to go there asking, what can I do for you? Open to all kind of conversation that might lead to collaboration in the future. I had the opportunity to work with a company founded by a Nobel laureate in medicine. She is an amazing woman and a true entrepreneur. We had a nice chat about her way from being a well-known scientist going into business. And I asked her if it was hard to take that step. And the simple answer was, 
You gotta have a team around you, and no, it isn't hard, just hard work. We also talked about the importance of being able to communicate your message as a scientist. She said, disclose. I guess that is similar to having an elevator pitch when you are networking. I talked to an engineer at Google and he said that it's more important that you fit into the team than having a special competence. There is always space for a team player. Besides the team, people use mentorship and coaching to a larger extent in the Bay Area. I suggest you to find your own mentor. It isn't just about doing the right things. You need to be early, but not too early. I have heard people telling stories about ideas that they had in their early days and couldn't make business out of them that is now part of the biggest companies in the world and their success stories just because they knew the market. I would say that people in general works a lot of hours in Silicon Valley and that's part of the culture but not a rule that you have to follow. Although there are a saying that one guy told me Once you get a BlackBerry, you're screwed. Then the company owns you. It's a lifestyle, like it or not. This was some bullet points and parts that I want you to consider in your way of becoming a successful entrepreneur. If you want to know more, let me know. They call it informational in the valley. In Sweden, we have the fika and it's a good way of discussing interesting topics with each other.